Okay, ladies and gents, so now that the World Cup is officially over, I thought I would react to my World Cup predictions because obviously my predictions, well, they didn't go the way how like I thought they were going to go, but I thought to myself, why not let me react to my predictions, so let's get into it. Hey, what's going on everybody? How are you people doing here back again with another World Cup prediction video? So this is going to be my updated prediction now that the qualifying has concluded. So anyway, so for Group A, we have Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and the Netherlands, and in my last video, I think I I predicted the Netherlands to finish number one and Senegal number two. So I am still going to stick with that prediction and say Netherlands will finish number one in the group and I have Senegal finishing second. So obviously I got my predictions right, right there for the Netherlands. They were incredible at the World Cup, even though they lost that heartbreaker to Argentina like how they did in 2014. I still imagine that the Netherlands have a great future in football and maybe one day they can also win the World Cup. So that prediction was right. And as for Senegal though, for Senegal, Senegal to still make it out of the group stage despite them not having Mane in the first game is absolutely incredible about them. And it just goes to show you here that even without Sadio Mane, you don't want to doubt Senegal. Because Senegal, they did a very fine job here in this group. And Ecuador third and Qatar fourth. And then for Group B, we have England, Iran, United States, and the Wales. So in my last video, I had England finishing number one in the group and the US number two. And so obviously, I got these predictions right again, man. Uh, England, obviously, you look at England, it was obvious that they were going to win this group here. But as for the United States, uh, that was quite a challenge for him to clinch that number two spot. But I'm just glad that the United States managed to make it out of the group stage here. And I can't wait to see if they can qualify for the 2026 World Cup. Obviously, despite England getting off to a very rough start in the UEFA Nations League tournament, I still think England will find a way to finish number one because I think that's what's going to determine Gareth Southgate's job, is that if England can perform very well at the World Cup, then I think Southgate is going to stay, but say that England do poorly, then I think South... Well, here's the thing with Gareth Southgate. Obviously, England, they are going to retain him as the manager, and in my honest opinion, if England want to be serious about winning, I thought they should have moved on from Gareth Southgate already. So that was a big surprise that they chose to keep him. Southgate is going to get sacked. So I have England finishing number one of the US number two. As for number three, I'm going to go with Wales and Iran number four. And for group C, I have Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. The thing about this group here is that it was a very interesting group here, but the biggest thing that shocked me was Mexico. They didn't make it out of the group stage. And of course, I was glad to see Poland make it out of the group stage here, but man, Mexico, they came really close. So obviously for number one here, I'm going to go with Argentina. Argentina here. I definitely am convinced Argentina is going to win this group. Let's not kid ourselves here. Argentina, they are more than likely going to win this group. And as for number two, I think it's going to determine between Mexico and Poland. And obviously, I got that prediction right as well here. But for Poland, man, uh, Poland were super lucky that they made it out of the group stage here. Seriously. Because part of me felt like Mexico were poised to win that number two spot. But hey, Poland, they managed to get lucky here and clinch that number two spot, man. But if I'm going to choose for number two. I'm going to say Poland here. I think Poland definitely have what it takes to challenge for that number two spot in the group along with Mexico. And as for Saudi Arabia, do I have them finishing fourth. And with Saudi Arabia, obviously nobody could imagine that they would beat Argentina two to one here. And as for Saudi Arabia, do give them credit. They did a really fine job here in the group. Because obviously for Saudi Arabia, it looked like it was going to be the group of death for them. But Saudi Arabia, man, uh, I think they took on the challenge very, very well here in this group. So yeah, Argentina Argentina, I have them finishing number one, Poland number two, Mexico number three, and Saudi Arabia number four. And then for Group D, we have France, Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. Now, so far, looking at the UEFA Nations League campaign here, France, they got off to a surprisingly very difficult and a very poor start. So yeah, it is pretty shocking to see France get off to a really bad start in the UEFA Nations League tournament. But once the World Cup arrives here, I am still convinced that France, they will finish number one. So yeah, I still have France finishing number one. And as for number two, I still got Denmark finishing second. So about that prediction for Denmark, yeah, Denmark, man, they were super abysmal at this World Cup, especially in this group here, man. Like, I don't know what's went wrong for Denmark here, especially since they made it to the final for at Euro 2020, but I guess it just goes to show you here that Denmark, man, they were just super unlucky not to clinch that number two spot. But however, I will give credit here to Australia, man, because Australia, they obviously were the better team in this group compared to Denmark here, and for Australia to clinch 
clinch that number two spot here. I honestly would have to say that was a super impressive thing by Australia to be able to do that and make it to the knockouts. Because with Australia, man, nobody could envision them making it out of this group stage here. But Australia, since they were able to get a win here in the group, they managed to do it. So Australia, another team that was very impressive in this group stage at the World Cup. Australia third and Tunisia fourth. And then for group B, we have Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. So for number one here, I'm going to say that I think Spain is going to finish number one here in this group, if you want to know my honest opinion. And for that second spot here, I think that Costa Rica and Japan can also challenge for that number two spot, just because you saw what Japan did at the 2018 World Cup. Japan were absolutely... Speaking of Japan, a man, who would have thought that Japan would have been able to make it out of this group stage again? Because obviously, prior to the World Cup, I thought it was going to be a very difficult journey for the Japan national team just to figure out how they were going to be able to beat teams like Spain and Germany. Without a doubt, Japan, I think they played way better football compared to Spain and Germany in this group, if I'm being honest here. Especially for Germany, though, like, I was absolutely shocked uh, for them to not make it out of the group stage and get knocked out in the group stage again for the second consecutive World Cup, especially considering the fact that Germany are four-time World Cup winners for them not to make it out of the group stage again was just flat-out shocking. But as for Spain, obviously that 7-0 victory over Costa Rica made a big difference, but as for Germany, man, uh, Germany, I don't know what happened, but so far it looks like Germany have fallen off in football after winning that 2014 World Cup against Argentina. Absolutely phenomenal at the World Cup, including them almost upsetting Belgium in the knockout. So yeah, you don't want to underestimate the Japan now. I said it, man. Don't underestimate the Japan national team. And I guess it proves my point, man. Japan just absolutely superb at the World Cup national team or underestimate Costa Rica. However, in 2018, Costa Rica, they did pretty poorly at the World Cup. Com I think performance-wise, Costa Rica's performance was even worse at the 2022 World Cup compared to the 2018 World Cup. But I guess you could say that Costa Rica, they got very unlucky for getting mashed up in a very difficult group again, like how they did in 2018 compared to their 2014 incredible World Cup. But I still think that Costa Rica, they can definitely maybe challenge for that number two spot too if they can get lucky. But for my final prediction, I have Spain finishing number one and i have germany finishing second nope that prediction aged like milk for germany for my germany prediction now the reason why i decided to put spain number one here is because you know you look at the spain national team currently we are witnessing the birth of another spanish golden Ge I do think that in the future, Spain, they can definitely win another trophy just because for them to be pretty decent at the last Euros tournament and especially at this year's World Cup, even though in the knockouts they got knocked out by Morocco, I still think Spain have a great future in international football generation, you know, with Pedri, Gavi, Ansu Fati, and Ferran Torres, to name a few players who I think are going to be very key players for the Spain national team within the next decade. So yeah, that's why I'm going to say number one for Spain, and for number two, I'm going to say Germany here, and as for third, I have Japan finishing third and Costa Rica fourth. And for group F, we have Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. So for number one here, I'm obviously going to go with Belgium here. Man, Belgium, bro, what the heck happened to Belgium at this year's World Cup? Like, like, bro, for them to not make it out of the group stage was just absolutely shocking. But obviously, Hazard's form has really dipped in these last, I have to say, probably three to four years. Hazard's dip in form, in my honest opinion, played a big factor, I think, in Belgium not being able to make it out of this group stage. Because obviously, despite them having that talent of De Bruyne, Lukaku, and Courtois, unfortunately for Belgium, man, they just absolutely could not get it done in the group stage just because I still believe Belgium will finish number one, but for number two, I'm going to say Croatia. For number three, I got Morocco finishing third and Canada fourth. But and my prediction, I guess you could say for Group F, completely aged like milk, because Morocco, man, A, for Morocco to make it to the final four at the World Cup, Morocco, without a doubt, I think they were the most impressive team in this group stage. Like, seriously, Morocco, after that 2-0 victory over Belgium, I kind of had a feeling that they were going to go very far at the World Cup. Just because something told me about that Morocco team just you know just their uh their team chemistry has been absolutely incredible and Morocco they should be proud of themselves man they were absolutely superb at the World Cup for them to beat Spain and Portugal was what was very impressive about this Moroccan side that I imagine that Morocco now they could look like early contenders for the Africa Cup of Nations if I'm being honest here 
but the thing about this group here is that it's going to be interesting to see how Canada can perform. And for Group G, we have Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. So obviously this group looks very similar to the 2018 World Cup group. Obviously you've got Brazil, who are one of the favorites to win the World Cup, and then you have Serbia, a very experienced Swiss national team, and we got Cameroon here, one of the best performers in the... So what can I say about my predictions here? Obviously, I kind of knew that Brazil were going to win that first place. I mean, there was not a doubt in my mind that Brazil weren't going to win that number one spot. And obviously, Switzerland, they won the group stage again together with uh, Brazil, like how they did in 2018. But Serbia, man, they were absolutely disappointing at this year's World Cup. I don't know what happened to the Serbia national team, but I thought that since they have the talent of Vlahovic, a very rising talent in Vlahovic, Mitrovic, Tadic, Kostic, Milankovic Savic. I honestly thought Serbia were finally going to make it out of the group stage here at the World Cup, but I guess you could say that the results show that Serbia, they weren't able to even win a single game in their group stage. Now, that was absolutely disappointing from the Serbia national team here, but I think a big reason why Serbia flopped at the World Cup again, like how they did in 2018, was because Serbia, they don't have a good midfield like how Croatia do, because besides Milankovic Savic, you know, Serbia's midfield is pretty bad, especially their defense, because I think to myself that if only only Serbia had a midfield that was as good as Croatia's midfield was, then I imagine they would have been World Cup contenders. The Africa Cup of Nations. But if I'm being honest here for my final prediction, I'm going to say Brazil here. I think Brazil definitely are going to finish first in the group. I don't see Brazil finishing anything other than first in the group. So yeah, that's why I'm going to have to go with the Brazil here, number one in the group. And as for number two, I think it's going to be a challenge between Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon as well. Speaking of Cameroon, Cameroon, I think they were also superb at this World Cup, especially for them to be able to beat Brazil in their last group stage game. But that Serbia-Switzerland game, another very exciting performance, five total goals scored in that game, you know, and what can I say, man? Those uh, These types of games are what's made the World Cup pretty interesting if you want to know my honest opinion. But for Serbia, man, the only thing I have to say is they need to figure out how to get a good defense and a good midfield if they want to start challenging the other teams. So it's going to be very interesting to see who finishes second in the group, but if I I'm going to pick based off of performances. I'm going to go with Serbia here. I think Serbia definitely. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Serbia's performance is uh, just absolutely just. Uh, I don't even know how to describe Serbia's performance at this year's World Cup. Just abysmal. Just that's the only way how I can say it. And the defense, complete mess has what it takes to finish second in the group. While they weren't really good in 2018, I think now Serbia's football team is definitely better compared to their 2018 World Cup squad, especially with the emergence of Vlahovic, who is basically going to add more firepower to Serbia's front attack that already has Kostic, Tadic, Mitrovic, Luka Jovic, Milankovic, Savic, to name a few key players for the Serbia national team. And that's why I'm going to say Serbia number two. Switzerland, I have them finishing third. Despite Switzerland being a very experienced team, they don't have Petkovic on their team anymore, so that could be a challenge for him to get used to playing under the new manager so yeah that's why i'm going to say number three for switzerland and cameroon number four and then for group h we have portugal ghana uruguay and south korea so obviously for number one i'm going to go with portugal here but for number and I got my prediction right, right there, but Uruguay, man, I don't know what the heck happened to Uruguay at this year's World Cup, but Uruguay, another nation that really underperformed, like Denmark, Serbia, Germany, and especially Belgium. Number two, I think it's going to be a challenge between Ghana and Uruguay for that number two spot. And for number two here, I'm going to go with Uruguay here, just because, you know, you look at Uruguay with the recent emergence of players like Federico Valverde, Darwin Nunez, and... Despite Uruguay having a disappointing showing at the World Cup, I imagine that Nunez and Valverde are going to be very key players for the Uruguay national team that will determine their future success in international football. Those players that I mentioned, I think, are going to be a very key part of Uruguay's future. But however, you look at the Ghana national team, man, uh, I think that Ghana, they could definitely do a lot of incredible things in this group. And I think Ghana definitely have a really great chance of also being able to challenge for that number two spot. So while Uruguay, they got a crazy squad to Ghana on the other hand you don't want to underestimate I forgot to mention though that South Korea man hey I gotta owe it to South Korea's football team man South Korea hands down way better than Uruguay in this group and Ghana in my honest opinion and for them to beat Portugal in the last game of the uh, World Cup group stage was what was very impressive about the South Korea national team and you know with South Korea they uh they surprised a lot of people here in this group because I thought it was going to be another difficult challenge for the South Korea national team but South Korea man they uh just 
just uh, were able to take on the challenge and they finished second in the group. So that was absolutely incredible for South Korea and, you know, for Japan and South Korea, they were super incredible and impressive at the World Cup. I mean, nobody gave Japan and South Korea a chance here and I guess you can say that their performances are a great example why you don't want to underestimate Japan and South Korea at World Cups. But yeah, ladies and gents, uh, I think that's pretty much it here with the video. So that's me reacting to my World Cup predictions here. So hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and see ya.